present to you our guest speaker and then leave the floor to him because he has lots to share with you. Founder uh, of the Canadian Arab Institute. This is really very. Uh, I took the, the short bio from the website of the Canada, Canadian Arab Institute, and he's being very, very humble here when he says co-founder. He is the major pillar of this NGO. He is a commissioner with the Ontario Human Rights Commission, committee member of Human Rights Watch Canada, and co-founder of the Canadian Arab Jewish Leadership Dialogue Group. Raja formerly served on several government and civil society bodies, such as Ontario's Hate Crimes Community Working Group, the Minister of Education's Equity and Inclusive Education Strategy Roundtable, Pride Toronto Community Advisory Panel, the uh, Institute on Public Affairs, and, and uh, as Advocacy Co-Chair of Human Rights Watch Canada. He also served as President of the Canadian Arab Federation, and we've talked about the CAF in our class on Tuesday, uh, in the period following the events of 9-11, authoring the book Arabs in Canada post 9-11. For many years, Raja was an international consultant in organizational development and capacity building, focusing on civil society and human rights work. Today, he is going to talk to us about uh, <coughs> your voice can. So your voice can make changes, I presume, but can make changes in Canada and with a special focus on Arab-Canadian contributions to politics in Canada. Thank you so much, Raja, for coming and sharing your views with us today. Thank you, May. You mean some people actually chose to be here uh, as opposed to the rest of you? Uh, good to be in Ottawa. I, I, the air smelled different in Ottawa this time around. I'm not sure why. I heard there's uh, been an election and a new government. Is that good or bad? Good, good or bad? Good. Of course we say this in the most nonpartisan way. <laughs> it's one of the things about uh, our, the challenges about the voting campaign that we started in, in June of this year, and, and that's, it was supposed to be nonpartisan. Uh, and we wanted it to be nonpartisan because the focus was about not which party to vote for, but rather, um, the engagement process itself, you know, being a citizen, knowing the, 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 uh, the duties of citizenship and the importance of being engaged uh, as, a, as a citizen in a democratic society. And uh, it, it turned out to be a lot harder than I expected to, to go through this entire campaign without being partisan because every single aspect of the campaign of the, of the elections has partisanship in it. Every single issue has parties standing on different sides. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and many in the media would, would actually be amazed that, are you actually doing a nonpartisan campaign like we expect you to be against the Conservative Party because of this and that and the other? And we said, well, it's more important to engage the community in a democratic exercise rather than to, to play a partisan role because what we as a community uh, are lacking the most right now is that civic engagement. Engagement in the democratic process and understanding of citizenship. And, and I, will, I will get to that. Uh, but again, thank you for, uh, for inviting me. It's, it's, it's great to be talking about all of this. And uh, I'm really going to be talking to you about my experience. And, and my experience started in 1997 uh, becoming involved and becoming an activist in the community. Anyone born, not born in 1997 has to leave the room right now. <laughs> okay. So, uh, in, in 1997, I joined the Canadian Arab Federation as a volunteer and then made my way to the executive committee. And uh, by 2002, I became the president. So you'll get the benefit of that experience, and not just that experience, but that experience as it compares with my experience with the Canadian Arab Institute, which is quite a different experience. And, and I will get to that, but first let me talk about the Canadian Arab Institute and give you a very sort of a brief uh, uh, history uh, and, uh, and, 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 and sort of a profile of the organization. I understand you've been to the website, I understand you've uh, looked at some of the reports, 
and uh, you've even listened to the uh, yeah, Canada or, or Canada in, in Arabic, and we'll talk about that a little bit. But I'm going to go quickly about some of the things we've done in the last couple of years, uh, and then I'll try and, and put the framework around them as to why we did these things and how do they fit into sort of our mandate. Uh, late last year, we, we brank, brought together a, an amazing uh, uh, group of performing artists, all of them Canadian Arabs, uh, ranging from uh, you know, opera singers to, to jazz to, uh, to fusion, this and the other. And, uh, and they performed at, at Kerner Hall, the Royal Conservatory of Music in Toronto, which is really the most, you know, one of the most prestigious music venues, a 1,200-seat theater, uh, the newest uh, venue in the city. And, and the idea really was there was to send a message. Yes, it was about beautiful music and, and, and wonderful musicians and performers, but the message was to the community, look at what you've contributed in the arts, in the performing arts. To the larger society, look at what we've been contributing to, this, to, to the arts you know, in this country. And that's for a, a very specific and important reason, is that our contributions have always been invisible as contributions by Canadian Arabs. Our community has always been invisible and one of our priorities is to make it more visible because given the overexposure of negativity coming from elsewhere in the world, we need to be very visible locally in our own sense of realistic uh, identity as opposed to the one that's coming from the headlines, taking, uh, you know, being, being foremost rather than uh, the news that's coming from elsewhere. So this was a statement. You know, this was a statement of... Uh, here is one aspect of our identity as Canadian Arabs of our country and our, our contributions. Uh, we partnered with a number of mainstream organizations uh, to present uh, you know, various aspects of Canadian Arab culture. Uh, this was with the Interior Science Center when they had the, uh, uh, the Sultans of Science exhibit uh, last year. Uh, and it's about the Islamic scientific discoveries uh, the year before that, we, we partnered with the Royal Ontario Museum in presenting Mesopotamia exhibit, which is, you know, the, the cradle of civilization. This is where civilization started, and it's uh, certainly one of the things that are not, you know, associated with being Arab today, not, not even in our own minds. We're currently presenting with the Aga Khan Museum in Toronto, and you haven't, if you haven't been, you should go to that museum. It's an amazing facility to enjoy uh, and, and take advantage of, and they're currently have an exhibit of contemporary Arab art that we're partnering with them on. So this is you know, a bunch of cultural uh, uh, events, exhibits that we've been uh, sort of partnering in. Uh, this is a lecture series that we partnered with the Monk Center, the Bill Graham Center at the University of Toronto, where we bring speakers who can actually shed some real uh, depth and, and, and light on what is happening in the region. And, and this is directed at academics, journalists, influencers, people who can benefit to, from getting a better understanding of a very complex region uh, that, uh, you know, that, that Canada is currently very much involved in. Um, we do an annual conference with the Rockman School of Management at the University of Toronto on economic opportunities for Canada and the Arab world. We have an, a Canadian Arab to Watch program where every month we, we recognize, we profile a Canadian Arab who tends to be more of the up-and-coming, younger uh, uh, variety, who are actually take, doing, you know, performing something of benefit to society, succeeding in a, in a way that is that is exceptional. And again, this is part of making the community visible uh, to both Canadians and to our own community that that is really lacking in terms of role models and and uh, and success uh, success figures. Another thing we've been doing is, is policy briefs. And these policy briefs are an issues that uh, particularly affect the community more than, uh, more than other communities. Uh, for instance, last year, Bill C-24. Uh, do you remember this bill? Uh, the, the, the bill amending uh, the Citizenship Act. And uh, one of the provisions in it is that it becomes easier for uh, the government to strip a Canadian citizen of their citizenship uh, if they hold dual passports or dual citizenships or if they can, might, might qualify for a uh, citizenship from another country. Uh, 
Um, the other thing we spoke out on, and we had a policy brief and a piece on the Global Mail on, was the issue of Syrian refugees. Our country was really dragging its feet uh, on, on accepting uh, you know, large numbers of, uh, 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 relocating large numbers of Syrian refugees. Uh, this is before the, uh, the, the issue became, I'm not sure where this came from. <laughs> I have a feeling it's from a desk here. Um, okay, so uh, so this is last year. This is uh, before the picture of the of the child Alian uh, made the issue sensational and front page, and uh, and and this is an issue that we uh, we we advocated on uh, from a research-based perspective that put the Syrian refugee event within the perspective of what Canada historically has done in terms of refugee crisis in the world and, and what it means for Canada today to continue on that tradition and why, uh, and why it should do so. Uh, we've published a number of research reports that you might have seen. This is you know, using the data from the 2011 census uh, that, uh, you know, that doesn't say much about Arabs in Canada until you've actually collected information about the 22 different countries that, come, that constitute the Arab world and then put them together, and then made sense of them in, in, the way, in the way that we did. And this is very basic information that you know, a, a community needs to know about itself. Uh, and uh, so you know, we've, we've done uh, quite a bit of that. We've done uh, two, two uh, conferences, uh, professional development conferences for youth. And, uh, and, and this is where we would bring about 40 to 50 established Canadian Arab professionals, put them in a room, uh, uh, and, then, and then bring in about 200 uh, young Canadian Arabs who are students or recent graduates, and, and, and give them the opportunity to interact uh, through panels and discussions and networking opportunities uh, so that they can benefit uh, from each other's experiences. We've done a number of uh, professional development workshops for youth, like, such as you know, leadership, presentation skills, and so on and so forth. Uh, networking opportunities for professionals. Um, you know, why, why do we do this? Uh, because, uh, because professionals uh, can benefit from networking opportunities, expanding their own networks um, uh, for their either personal uh, development or for their uh, business development or career development or so on. And, uh, and this brings me to sort of our vision. You know, people would often come to me and say, we see you doing concerts and exhibits and policy papers and then youth conferences. What are you guys about? Like, that doesn't seem to make sense. What, well, it actually it does. There is, there is a method to the madness. Because um, everything we do really pours into uh, our vision. And our vision is for a uh, uh, engaged and empowered community in a, in a respectful and inclusive society. So there is the community part, engaged and empowered, and there is the society part, and that is an inclusive and, and respectful society. So, you know, the work that we do, for instance, uh, in the areas of, uh, of policy and, and research, uh, is, and, and, and which is directed at policy and decision makers, this work that we do is, 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 tr is trying to influence policies that will make it more or less inclusive for our community you know, in, 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 this, uh, in this society. So for instance, I mentioned C24. That was making us less included uh, in, in society. Bill C51, what's Bill C51? C51. Anti-terrorism Act 2015. Have, you know, less, less included uh, in society. Zero Tolerance for Barbaric Practices Act. <laughs> that was, we didn't even have to bother to do a policy brief on that. I mean, you don't. Anyone in this room for barbaric practices raise your hand? You know, when, when, when every aspect that was criminalized under this Barbaric Practices Act was already criminalized by some other statute, and when no one out there is calling for bare practices, you have to wonder, why did we need this bill? But there it was, sort of staring us you know, in, in the face. 
So, and then culture education. So this is the lecture series I mentioned. And this is the exhibits, the concerts. This is all about educating our community and the Canadian public about the culture and the heritage that we come from. Again, you know, countering the negative narrative out there. I mean, let's face it, the headlines are not good. The headlines are about uh, Islamic State and, and Al-Qaeda and Syria conflict and refugees. Uh, nothing about the, the headlines says anything about us as, as Arabs, uh, of, as Canadians of Arab heritage. So we need to have the counter narrative to what's going on out there. Unfortunately so, but that's the reality and we have to deal with it. So the work that we do on culture and education is for the Canadian public and opinion makers, as I mentioned earlier. And lastly, you know, community development and engagement. So the conferences, the youth conferences, um, uh, and so on. And the, the voting exercise was very much about community engagement. And that's clearly directed at the sort of Canadian Arab community. So, um, you know, if you look at it in, in this perspective, it, it starts making sense. All these things that we're doing, uh, you know, they, they make sense. And they all pour into, uh, you know, the matter of, of inclusion. I mean, if, if someone says, so what, what are you guys about? Uh, the short answer is, you know, the, the, the three second elevator pitch. We are about the inclusion of the community in the cultural, civic, political, and socioeconomic life of the country. That's the bottom line of what we do. Um, let me pause for a minute here and see if, if, uh, if anything I'm saying is not making sense or needs clarification. Um, yes? You mentioned uh, C24 and C15. Can you elaborate on how did you get engaged or what was your contribution to the So C24, the uh, amendment to the Citizenship Act, um, we, we engaged a, a researcher with expertise in the area of citizenship, and we asked him to uh, to, to do you know the, to analyze uh, the, the bill. This was before it became an act, and um, and let us know how which aspects of it will affect the community sort of the most. Uh, so he did that came back with a draft. We passed this draft on to a human rights lawyer to add the human rights angle of it. And then, and then sort of went through it one more time and came up with a policy brief that said specifically how the bill will you know, impact uh, the community specifically, but also you know, the rights of Canadians in general. And then, uh, and then we took this brief, uh, hand-delivered it to uh, the Minister Alexander, the Minister of Social and Immigration at the time, <clears throat> excuse me, and then hand delivered it to the critics uh, from uh, the two main opposition parties, and uh, and uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, circulated it to the committee, uh, the parliamentary committee that was you know studying uh, the bill at the time. So this was uh, the extent you know of uh, of our engagement. Uh, both, uh, both opposition parties at the time voted against it, but the Conservatives had a majority. Um, the minister um, listened but did not respond. Uh, I, think he, I think he had inherited this uh, from Jason Kenney, who was the minister before him, and there wasn't much that he you know, would do about it without paying a price. So, so it, there it was, it passed. And, uh, uh, the Liberals uh, have had promised to repeal C24, and uh, we look forward to that happening. They agreed on 51, right? Pardon? They are okay with 51. The Liberals? Yeah. Well, they voted for it, but they said that they will repeal uh, major parts of it. Mm -hmm. And today I read in the paper that they actually have already started working on doing that as soon as you know Parliament returns. And, and, and hopefully that happens. Um, okay, so the, the, the voter campaign, and I, and I spoke about this a little bit uh, earlier and, and said that, uh, uh, that you know, it, it really was about uh, an, an opportunity to talk about you know, civic engagement and, and uh, engagement in a democratic process. Um, I mean, obviously we wanted uh, 
more Canadian Arabs to vote. Um, and, and there's no hard data that tells us how, what percentage actually uh, votes. There's guesstimates out there that talk about 35 to 40 percent uh, turnout rate uh, compared to uh, 61 percent in the 2011 election. Uh, but what was important to us is that the perception is there about among many in the community, among the politicians, the candidates, the parties, that Canadian Arabs do not vote in big numbers. And that's, and that's a, you know, a, a really a, a barrier to engaging with uh, elected officials in any effective way, because if you don't vote, then in a way, it's not right, but in a way, why should I listen to you? Um, so, so that needed to be corrected, the perception needed to be corrected, but more importantly, the sense of engagement needed to be uh, needed to be lit up. It needed to be brought into the community. Um, most of us who immigrated to this country do not know what citizenship means. Because we come from countries where we weren't citizens, we were more like subjects rather than citizens. So citizens' rights, citizens' duties, the fact that it, the citizen is not just sitting there receiving from the government, whether it's receiving good things or bad things, that there is citizenship engagement, that there's room for citizens to uh, impact decision-making, policy-making. Um, these are all absent uh, from the tradition of people who immigrated from Arab countries. And 70% and or so of Canadian Arabs came to this country in the last 20 years. So it's a very new community. Uh, so this, the campaign, the election, uh, was an opportunity for us to engage the community in this discussion, the discussion of citizenship. And, and we were keen to talk about uh, voting as not the last step, rather than the first step to being politically engaged. It's the first step in, in, in being engaged in, in the democratic process. And it's only one of the ways to be engaged as a citizen. We talk about uh, civic engagement, about... Uh, uh, about public appointments, about public commissions and agencies, and, and so many different ways for a citizen to be engaged. So, um, so this opportunity, we took advantage of it, and, uh, and we focused on the youth. Why did we focus on the youth? Because the, it, it's, the youth are known to be less participative in, in, in elections. Um, I think in, in 2011, participation rate was 38%. So that's one reason. But another reason is that if young people your age get engaged, get the understanding on the benefits of engagement at, at, at this age, then the chances that they will be more engaged citizens throughout their lives uh, are, much, are much higher. So uh, we started the campaign with uh, the Arabic version of O Canada, which I believe you've had the chance to listen to? My students, please. Your not students. everyone in the room. Not everyone in the room. Or seen it on Facebook, for you've, sure. You've seen it? <laughs> Anyone have seen it? OK, two people. Do you want to hear it again? Yes. <laughs>
to the campaign, to, to the vote. And, and really the, the intention here was to get people's attention. That uh, there's, a, there's an election you know, coming up and we are citizens and you're, you know, you sing your, your Canada and Arabic and feel more patriotic. And the way to express your patriotism is to engage in the democratic process and take part you know, in, the, in the election. So, uh, and, and it, it got people's attention. I mean, we've got a uh, you know, number of media outlets, uh, BuzzFeed, uh, Toronto Star, Metro News, uh, a lot of uh, media picked it up, sorry, and uh, the HuffPost, and, 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 you know, 90 plus percent of the reaction was positive. Of course, there were those who, uh, when I sing it in Arabic, go back home and do it. <laughs> but you know, when, when, when the Department of Foreign Affairs uh, puts it on its website, and when Canadian embassies in the Middle East posted it on their website on Canada Day. So this is how we started the campaign and got uh, sort of everyone's attention. Let me see what we got here. No, that's not it. Um, and let me tell you about the other aspects of the campaign, um, here is... Okay. Um, so, the, 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 it was a multifaceted campaign, again, tilted towards youth, but, but not completely. And, uh, and it included in it, uh, um, you know, the election news feed, so on a daily basis, we will uh, you know, repost uh, items from the news that specifically you know, address issues of the election and the, and the campaign and what's going on in it. We've had a number of uh, webinars uh, that addressed uh, topics like uh, citizenship and immigration, uh, multiculturalism, uh, the uh, uh, security agenda and you know, civil rights, uh, foreign policy, topics that are of more interest or more relevance to, to the Canadian Arab community. And, and we wanted to do them on a webinar because it, it, you can reach anyone anywhere. And, uh, and then you can continue to have that recorded uh, 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 lecture on your website and so on. Uh, we organized you know, a number of panels in, in many different cities. Unfortunately, we did not make it to Ottawa. Our focus was more in sort of southern Ontario. And, and these panels were not about just the vote, it was about civic engagement. So we talked about opportunities for engagement and, 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 and how they benefit not just society and the community, but the individual themselves. And, um, and then uh, we, you know, every picnic, every gala, every event what was happening in the, in the, in the community, we went to and, and spread our message there. Uh, we had a contest uh, that uh, encourage people to, to participate and, and, uh, and send in their own uh, contributions. This thing here, uh, here is called the Arab Faces of Canada. And this is a, 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 a similar feature to uh, Humans of uh, New York, I think it's called, the, uh, the, that succeeded a lot. And, and this is where we'll just put regular people telling their stories, how they feel about Canada, about being Canadian, and, and citizenship and, and all of those things. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, we published a, uh, uh, we published uh, what's called the 101 series. And this is the basics of uh, the democratic system. Uh, what's, an, what's a parliament? What's an MP? How do laws get made? Uh, how, what's the, uh, the election process? What do you need to have? How do you find out about the platforms? Um, and what's the difference between federal and provincial and municipal government? It's basic stuff, but it's stuff that most immigrants do not know about, or new immigrants, I should say. So we, we publish a series of those. And um, we, we published this animated video uh, about how, you know, how votes matter. I don't know if anyone has seen that. Has, have you seen that one? This one, yes. Yeah. 
the, uh, this one here, that, uh, did, have you seen it? Has anyone seen it? I'm sensing an opportunity here. Here it is. I don't think it really makes a difference if I vote or not. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I might consider it if they have Knef at the polling station. <laughs> the things you do for your country. You can make a difference. Let your voice be heard. Be heard. Be heard. Why? Consider this. Between 2006 and 2011, the number of people of Arab origin in Canada rose by 33% to over 750,000. Why does this matter? Well, in many writings in the 2011 federal election, members of parliament were elected by a difference of less than 1,000 votes. These are your members of parliament. Over 130 ridings in the country have over 1,000 Canadian Arab eligible voters. And more than 500,000 Canadian Arabs can vote in this year's election. Every vote counts. That's why democracy belongs to those who participate. Cast your vote. Let your voice be heard. Yalla! Vote! Go to www.yourvoicecanada.com We also got a number of uh, you know, testimonials from uh, you know, known figures to you know, also get, get uh, people's attention. So that's, that's in a nutshell um, you know, what, what the sort of campaign looked like. That last, you know, video, you know, set in a shisha cafe with, it was clearly directed at youth. And, um, and uh, um, you know, the, uh, trying to address the, the, the point that many youth make, you know, what's my voice, you know, what's my vote going to matter? It's not going to make a difference. So, uh, let me just spend a few more minutes on some of the things that we've got, whoops. Uh, we've got coming up, and then I'll open the floor. There we go. So, Bob, uh, I mentioned youth conferences, I mentioned youth development workshops, and so on. Um, we're trying now to sort of create a, a package uh, that brings all these youth oriented. Um, uh, opportunities, uh, development opportunities under one umbrella, and we're calling it the CAI Academy. Um, we've already started a network of campus ambassadors, uh, so in, in each campus we'll have at least one person who can be our uh, point of contact with student groups on, on that campus, and incidentally, the Ottawa University campus ambassador position is still vacant. I have business cards here, if anyone is interested, we can talk about it. Um, and uh, uh, talk about you know, campus empowerment, and this is where we want to strengthen student groups that are campus-based so that they're better able to address the needs, understand and address the needs of the student population with our support. Professional development opportunities, networking, mentorships. We, we started designing a mentorship, uh, a, a big mentorship program. Uh, even scholarships, uh, even scholarships, and, and so on. And uh, we've applied for funding from different uh, foundations for this, and, and we're hoping if, if one of them comes through, then we'll be able to start this uh, program early in, in 2016, and it will be at least a three-year uh, three program uh, meant to sort of engage and, and, and advance uh, the youth in the community. Community mapping exercise, we need to understand Who's who, where, what are they doing, how they are doing, what are the challenges, what are their opportunities, um, their language skills, their employment skills, and so on and so forth. We don't know these things. And, and until we know these things, we're not able to focus in on specific areas that need to be studied further. And, and this, is a, uh, this is a very important 
uh, exercise. We have an awards gala coming up. Um, you know, awards, uh, and, 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 and this particular awards gala, and it's our first, we're recognizing two individuals. One of them is Mary Jo Haddad, who's the former CEO of uh, Sick Kids Hospital in Toronto, who made her way from being a nurse to becoming the CEO uh, and becoming a role model for many other women. And the other one is Sheldon Levy, the departing uh, 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 president of uh, Ryerson University, uh, who, uh, who created a campus that is very reflective of, uh, of the city of Toronto and, and very inclusive of, uh, of everyone, and appointed a, 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 an Arab Muslim uh, as his provost uh, and, and the university. So these are really outreach opportunities. This is an opportunity for uh, you know, for the, the institute and its constituency to, to reach out to communities in the, in the, in the education sector, and the health sector, and, uh, and, and sort of Canadians, you know, Canadians in, in general. It's also a fundraiser. <laughs> um, we're looking at starting an international competition uh, uh, for Arab Middle Eastern art. Uh, now, how does this advance our objectives, uh, simply, uh, you know, by talking about art from, from the Arab world, we are talking about something, you know, other than ISIS. We're also talking about culture and heritage, and the language of art reaches everyone. So this is an opportunity to promote <coughs> art from the Arab world, but also for us here as Canadians, you know, an international community, uh, from Canada, uh, sorry, international competition based out of Canada uh, is, is a good thing for, uh, for the art scene uh, here and, and for you know, uh, improving cultural understanding and, and, and all that. Um, we have an eight-member board at the time. At this point, it's five of them are academics. Um, and uh, and uh, we have this white dude here, Brady Wood. He's, he's got, doesn't have an Arab bone in his body, but he believes in our mission. And uh, he's now the chair uh, of, uh, of the board. Um, our uh, advisory board is, is a very mixed bag of uh, former politicians, former ministers. Uh, this is uh, Mona Nimmer, who is the VP of research here at the University of Ottawa. This is Mamdouh Shukri, is the president of York University. This is a former ambassador. Al Mendes is a professor of international law and human rights here at the uh, University of uh, Ottawa. Hoda Al-Marari is the first, and Taisir Abu Nasser is the second. Uh, deans, female deans of engineering in the country, they're both, they're both Arab. Uh, Bill Graham, former minister. Jamila Hassan is, is, a, uh, is the foremost for Canadian Arab artist, and, and, uh, and so on. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very outreach type of, 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 uh, of organization. And I will shut up now. <laughs> <laughs>